Welcome to this demonstration of SNP and Variation Suite 7. In this demonstration, we will be running through an abbreviated genome-wide association analysis where we will be performing a chi-squared test to assess the association between roughly 500,000 SNPs and a case control status. The data set used for this demonstration is a combination of actual genotype values which we acquired from 565 subjects from the Structural Variation of Chromosomes in Autism Spectrum Disorder Study which is available on NCBI's Gene Expression Omnibus database and a simulated case control status that we generated for demonstration purposes only. So you can see I have a project here with two data sets. The first data set is a simulated phenotype spreadsheet. If I open up this spreadsheet you can see that there are six phenotypic columns and 565 samples. Again, this is a simulated phenotype for a data set that we downloaded from the GEO database. And this first column here, phenotype 1, is the column that we'll be using for the case control status in this association test. If you right click on this column, you can actually see by choosing example scripts, value counts, that there are 282 cases in this data set and 283 controls. The second data set in the spreadsheet is 500k genotypes. And you can see in this spreadsheet that I once again have 565 samples designated by the row labels here on the left and roughly 500,000 SNPs designated by the columns here up on top. So the first thing we want to do is apply a genetic marker map to this spreadsheet. The reason is, is that will ensure that the markers are placed in the correct order and according to chromosome and genomic position, as well as it will apply some annotations from the Affymetrics annotation file to the SNPs as well, so you can glean more information from the most significant SNPs. To do that, if you choose up under the file menu here and click Apply Genetic Marker Map, it will bring up a dialog that lists the, the marker maps you have on your hard drive. In this case, I've got various marker maps here, but the one that I'm interested in is the Affymetrix Mapping 250K NSP and STY marker map, which is a combination of both the 250K arrays, which together make up the Affymetrix 500K array. So I'll select that and click OK. It will then ask me which marker map fields I'll want to show by default. Go ahead and check everything and click OK. This will then apply a marker map to that particular spreadsheet. So you can see here that I now have a green map button in the upper left hand corner. If I click that, those fields that I just checked, you can see that those are the fields that are visible. If I want to hide one of those fields, for example, I can right click on that map button and say uncheck strand and that will hide the strand. But as we just previously chose, every time you apply that particular marker map to the spreadsheet, those particular marker map fields that we selected will be visible. You can also see that the markers are now arranged in genomic order with chromosome 1 first all the way through chromosome X. Now that we've got the marker map applied to the spreadsheet, we're going to want to join our phenotype information with it. So you can do that by selecting File, Join or Merge Spreadsheets. And it's going to ask me which spreadsheet would I like to join this with. I'm going to select the simulated phenotype spreadsheet here and click OK. It will then bring up the Join or Merge Spreadsheets dialog window. Ask me for a new data set name. I'll go ahead and leave that as is. And then it will ask me how I want to match the two spreadsheets. This is important because you want to make sure that when you join your data that, that the sample's genotypes line up with their phenotypes. So to do this, the best way to do this is to ensure that both spreadsheets have the same row labels as designated here on the left. If by chance you don't have the same row labels, you can either edit those in the spreadsheet editor or choose a custom order here. But for this particular demonstration, I know that the row labels are matching, so I'm going to leave that as the matching criteria. I'll leave the other parameters here as, as the defaults and click OK to join. This will go through and then join the two spreadsheets together. And now you can see that I've got the phenotype information here as the first six columns, followed by the genotype information throughout the spreadsheet. And once again, on the map button here, I can see that there's map information for the genotypes. Now that I've got the two spreadsheets joined, I'm going to go ahead and select my dependent variable for an association test. For this demonstration, I'm going to use phenotype 1 as my case control status. T to make that my dependent variable, just left click it once. That turns up magenta. Magenta columns designate that that column is going to be used as the dependent variable for an association test. Next, go to the Analysis menu 
and select genotype association test. This brings up the genotype association test window where you can select from a number of genetic models as well as each model has its various test statistics that you can do. There's other multiple testing corrections including permutation tests um, as well as the various outputs. You can also choose to output marker statistics for every marker as well. For this demonstration I'm just going to go ahead and choose the basic allele test and the chi-square test statistic and click run. This now is scanning through all 500,000 variables for the 565 samples and it's doing a chi-squared on each SNP to test association with the case control status. It will now compile the results and then output a spreadsheet that's got the various test statistics that we just chose. So here we got chi-square p, the negative log 10 p of that column, the expected p, as well as the Bonifroni correction here at the end, and the false discovery rate. From here you want to check to see which SNPs are most significant in the association test. I can do that simply by right-clicking on this negative log 10 p column and choose sort descending. This then sorts the spreadsheet by the most significant SNPs. If I click on this map button again, you can now see that the marker map information here is shown on the left as opposed to the top. I'm going to go ahead and hide some of those map fields so we can see the association test results better. Right clicking and unchecking those boxes again. So now you can see that the most significant SNP is located on chromosome 6. It's got its RS number here, associated gene and cytoband. If you want to investigate this SNP further outside of the software, you can always right click on, on any of these green columns here and choose one of the databases that we support. Now beyond visualizing your results in a spreadsheet, you can also visualize them in a genome browser in what's referred to as a Manhattan plot. To do this, let's go ahead and click this map button again to hide the marker map information. Then you right click on the chi-squared negative log 10p column and click plot variable. This will then bring up the genome browser. And you can see that you've got a standard p-value plot here which is ordered from chromosome 1 through x. But what we want to do is, is turn this just single colored p-value plot into a multicolor Manhattan plot where each chromosome is colored differently. To do that, you'll notice up here in the graph control interface you have what we refer to as graph nodes and graph items. To create a Manhattan plot, click on the graph item, chi-square negative log 10p, choose the filter tab, select chromosome, and choose split. This will then go ahead and split that negative log 10p column into individual items, one for each chromosome, where each item is colored differently. You can go in and color each one of these differently by selecting that appropriate graph item, selecting the item tab, and changing the color if you prefer. You can change it to any of the colors we have here or create your own custom colors. So that, now that I got my Manhattan plot, I want to go ahead and zoom in and investigate my most significant regions a little bit more. I can do that by left clicking and dragging anywhere on the plot or by double clicking on the 6 in the full domain view or I can even go in and click the drop down button and click chromosome 6. So now you can see I've zoomed in to just chromosome 6 here as designated by the cytoband track here on the bottom. I can go ahead and zoom in further by left clicking and dragging on the x-axis. I'll do that a couple times. So you can see that this region has many significant markers in it. The most significant one here is almost 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. I can actually see that by clicking on that point. And in the data console here, it shows me the, the value for that particular SNP, as well as the chromosome in position, the SNP identifier as designated in the Affymetrix annotation track. I can also look up that region in another database by clicking one of the hyperlinks here. But the last thing I want to know is which genes these significant markers reside in. You can see here on the bottom pane, the annotation tracks, I have RefSec genes listed here. And right now they're kind of small, so you can't really see any information on them. I can actually pull this tab up until I get more gene information. I can also continue zooming in on this region by left-clicking and dragging until I can see actual individual genes all the way down to the codon and exon levels. 
I can get more information about this particular gene by just clicking anywhere on it, which then the information shows up in the data console down here. So here I've got the name of the gene, the RefSec name, what strand it was on, codon start and stops, as well as the number of exons, etc. So there you go. Within just a few minutes, we were able to apply a genetic marker map to a spreadsheet, join the phenotype and genotype spreadsheets together, run an association test, and create a Manhattan plot.